Hey what's up guys, Krisha back with another video and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the early 2008 iMac. This is the 2008 iMac. Are you excited about your new computer? Yes. Can you stop touching the mic? Yes. What do you plan to do on this computer? Um. I said stop touching it. Play games. <laughs> Can you stop touching it? It's going to be disturbing. And what else besides games? GTA. That's a game, stop it and you know what I mean? Like, you know, old enough to play it. Even I'm not old enough to play it, okay? Okay, fine. Um, don't, you know this computer is mainly for your school? Yes. Okay, good. I'm glad you know that. The specific model of iMac I have features an Intel Core 2 Duo processor running at 2.8 GHz. It also has 2 GB of uh, DDR2 memory which is just not enough and it also has AMD's ATI Radon graphics which features 128 MB of video memory. I can then proceed to power on the device. It usually boots up with a, either a white screen or a white screen with a blinking question mark logo on it which usually indicates no operating system but in my case it actually means a bad hard drive. So let's fix this thing, shall we? For the tools for this repair, I'm going to be using two cheap suction cups that I got off Amazon along with a bunch of these orange, well, pry tools and other stuff. And you're also, I'm also going to be popping in 4 gigs of uh, DDR2 memory, this is in the sodium form factor. And I'm also going to be uh, replacing the hard drive in here with a 120 gig SSD. Uh, also, additionally, we're going to need a bunch of screwdrivers, specifically Torx T8 and Phillips head. Okay, so now let's uh, get started with the iMac. So it's pretty heavy, big guy over here. And uh, okay, first step is to remove the, the slot that covers the uh, RAM modules. And uh, this proved to be pretty difficult for some reason. Uh, I don't know why, but in like every single guide, including the iFixit guide, it just easily pops off. But... Uh, I had to resort to prying with uh, razor blades and uh, a spudger to try and get it out. But eventually, it uh, it just came out. Uh, then I can position the two suction cups in a diagonal form factor and carefully pull out the uh, glass that covers the display. Next, we have a crap ton of screws and do note, uh, in some models of this iMac, uh, they are of different lengths. So, uh, whatever you do, if you're going to attempt this yourself, uh, do you know keep them in order because uh, you can well lose something and uh, putting the wrong screw in the wrong hole can uh, damage something This does take a while doesn't it I can then proceed to remove the uh, metallic bezel made of aluminum on here and uh, disconnect the uh, webcam and then uh, we can proceed further over here you can uh, remove the display one of the display connectors there's actually a couple of them and this specific one is held on by two screws after you remove the two screws you can easily just pull it up uh, using the pl uh, black color uh, pull out thing they've given over here Next, we have to sit and remove a bunch more of Torx screws that surround the LCD display. Now we can uh, remove a bunch of these small cables and connectors. I'm pretty sure that's the temperature sensor and uh, we can carefully lift up the display and remove the plastic wrap and then pull carefully pull out the cable underneath you don't want to touch anything because uh, it, uh, some of these capacitors can possess some power and uh, well you know do some damage to you and all the other parts as well
I'm gonna quickly take uh, an old paintbrush and quickly dust off everything. Uh, make sure this is a soft brush so it doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't break off any of the SMD components if they're not soldered properly on there. So, uh, well, after 12 years, you do want to give your computer clean. So now quickly, I'm gonna disconnect the temperature sensor of the old hard drive in here, which well has failed. Okay, now I'm just gonna uh, pop in the SSD. I've just put in some double-sided tape because. Uh, doesn't have any moving parts and uh, there's not really any way to screw it down over here either so uh, well yeah I can then uh, position the display back on and uh, connect all those connectors again. I can quickly install uh, the screws that uh, hold the LCD display in place. Now I'm going to install the screws uh, covering that, uh, sorry, hold the uh, one of these display connectors in place. Now I'm going to position the iMac up and uh, plug in a power cable and just uh, hope that it boots up. Yes, it does work. After powering off the iMac, I'm going to unplug the cables and proceed to uh, position the bezel I'm gonna quickly connect the Wi-Fi uh, sorry the webcam and uh, position the bezel properly sometimes it does take a few tries but eventually you do get it on I'm gonna quickly uh, give the display a wipe and uh, quickly install the screws even though I've not shown it in the video it is done you can then uh, position the uh, the glass on top and uh, it's just held by magnets so nothing major now I'm gonna proceed to install an operating system over here I've chosen Mac OS Snow Leopard for now because its installation CD is well easily available and uh, it boots up into the setup page so I'm going to quickly set it up and then I'm going to use DOS Dude 1's macOS Catalina Patcho which I'll leave a link in the description for to install macOS Catalina on this Mac uh, he has a pretty useful video uh, I'll also leave that in the description if you want to do something similar
now we've booted uh, into the macOS Snow Leopard uh, desktop and now we can just quickly check everything and after installing Catalina this is what the iMac looks like now let's proceed to upgrade the RAM in this guy this can technically go to 6 unofficially even though Apple only says you can uh, pop in 4 unfortunately uh, I couldn't find any 4GB DDR2 SODIM modules on Amazon so I'm gonna just have to stick with 4GB uh, right now I'm gonna now remove the old ones and pop in the new ones I can uh, continue to install the the shield that uh, the the cover for the RAM back on. This was actually easier than removing it. Now, uh, once everything has uh, been put into place and everything is installed, I'm gonna quickly uh, plug in the power cable and uh, what the closest keyboard and mouse I could find lying around near me and uh, proceed to test out the computer. And just like that, we boot into the Mac. Uh, just like that, we boot into the Mac OS Catalina homepage, and uh, can proceed to enter my password. And just like that, we are into Mac OS Catalina. As you can see, everything is running pretty well, and uh, everything opens up at an instant due to the SSD. And this clearly does feel much more usable than that old 5400 RPM hard drive that was there, and which well before it failed. And the four gigs of RAM will obviously help in uh, some multitasking as you can see this is running on Catalina and there you have it in the early 2008 iMac running macOS Catalina hope you enjoyed this video make sure to leave a like subscribe and uh, comment your suggestions down below and uh, that's another KP triple video thanks for watching peace out